<laughs> Did you guys land on a, on a name for the February time loop movie pod? I like Loopy Wary. Loopy Wary is good. Loopy Wary? Yeah, Fab Loopy Wary has a good ring to it. <laughs> Fab hey. Loop Wary? Oh, God, that's too hard. <laughs> Loopy Wary, Fab Loop Wary. Loopy Wary, Fab Loop Wary is Fab the name Loop-y. of it. Put down. The first one we're doing is fucking Groundhog Day starring Phil Murray and Amy McPowell. Um, I... Are those their names? Yeah, fi- also, Phil Murray. Also, Groundhog Day today. Cool. Right. right? On top I'm of all of this, and Caitlin's dressed as a groundhog, and I have the uh, the patience of Bill Murray in this movie uh, right now. <laughs> At what so, point? <laughs> up until he decides that, hey, I'm going to be a good person, that's me. I'm sitting here watching this movie filled with rage about my job and the world, and I'm going, you know, Bill, Phil doesn't, he's not, like, everybody treats him like he's this huge asshole. But he's not that. He's not that bad. He's he's kind of <laughs> he's kind of a dick. He's you early know? '90s asshole. Yeah, everybody around him is way too positive. I get it. <laughs> Larry um, is, and Larry is kind of a dick as well. Yeah, I I really only had a couple genuine laugh out loud, but we'll get to that. Um, so why don't we get right into it? Uh, I'm the host this week. That's right. I've got the reins, which means it's going to be a nice tight. Short show. We're all gonna go to bed real early tonight. Um, we'll start off with uh, we'll start off with the person moving most, which when I looked at the screen was Kaylin. What's your history with this movie? When's the first time you saw it? And if you had one day you could loop over and over again forever, what day would you choose? Ooh, damn! I didn't know we were gonna get deep with it. Uh, okay. I didn't either so... until my brain said, "Ask him." <laughs> It just I don't happened. know if that's a deep question. <laughs> Check this out. I can do like a gym from the office, like look at the camera thing now. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just did it to make fun of you and realize I was also doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so for Instagram, you're just seeing me look at the camera, but it, but it doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense for except for me seeing what I'm seeing. Anyway, sorry, Caleb. Go ahead. What was that about this? You being stuff a tight your stories in a sack. <laughs> <laughs> so tight toy like a toy gun toy like a we're toy gonna gun. take you off the reins jay um the to your question so the first part of your question uh my do you guys know when this movie came out on like tv like would have been like 94 95 maybe or something because that would well been, the movie like, came out in 1993 so it probably would have been a year or so later right maybe more comes out on video of, a year after in this era it comes out of Probably, probably eighteen months later, it was on television. Year and a half, yeah. So, because it would have been through TV, like my first introduction to it, probably on like Superstation or whatever, uh, like catching bits and pieces here and there, kind of thing, and then eventually getting the DVD and watching it in its entirety, front to back. Um, but yeah, as a kid, it's like, oh, he's, he's you know reliving the same day. Um, he's kind of a jerk or whatever, uh, but then he becomes a nice guy. Ooh, yay! <laughs> uh, but what day would I want to relive? Because he makes a note, he makes a comment about that. I was like, oh, why couldn't it have been that day or whatever? Um, what day would I relive? Ooh, what day would I relive? What day would I relive? See, like when I said it was a deep question, it's kind of deep because I have to think about it. Like you caught me off guard. Um. Is there anything? Do I have any good days that I can? Are, is this a PG? Is this a PG show? It's whatever. I did, I just started recording by accident, so Steve, I might need to. I might need the uh, the raw copy off of. The... See, this is why I uh, I'm gonna always record as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Safety. The sa- The safety. Yeah. Everybody um, record. Okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Best day. Best day. Best day. Um. Man, I don't, I don't fucking know. Probably, you know what? Probably the let's do uh, Halloween when I dressed as Hunter S. Thompson. That was pretty that was fun. Good. That was a good <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. I night. remember that because the funny thing about that night is, by about nine p.m., you, we were both so wasted that we were both just Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, I believe I was just. <laughs> I believe I was just dressed as 
myself because I probably had to work till fucking midnight. But yeah, I remember us sitting that. in my living room at my place on not sure, but uh, Windsor. Was it Brunswick at the? Was it Brunswick at the time? No, well, you lived there, but I live. Remember, I lived at like uh, Shabucto and Windsor in that house. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. With yeah. Steve, and it was like me and you. It, whatever. It was a bunch of us. We were all fucked up, and you were, but you were full Hunter S. Thompson all night. It was crazy. What 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 are you looking at there, Steve? I was just looking at the clock, wondering how long the story was going to be because I definitely want to relive <laughs> this moment over and over. Sorry. Again. <laughs> uh, let's move on. Nice. So we're. So we're reliving it now for you over and over. Um, I'll say this. I'll say. I'll say. I'll say this one thing. The best part about doing that costume is you can get all twisted, and everyone just assumes you're playing a role, but you can actually yeah. be twisted. You're just in character. Uh, Steve, I'll turn it over to you before I go on my rant about this movie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> same questions, I guess. Um, Same question. The first time I saw this movie, <clears throat> I was at my cottage when I was a child, and I believe we rented it from like the in my I had a cottage in Bob Cajun, and there was this little video rental place that was also a, a gas station, I believe, and yep. they only had like fifty movies, like it was just like a wall of movies or whatever. Um, and my parents rented it, and I guess they're like, "Oh, Bill Murray is fun. This is probably a great movie for our child to watch." Not really. It's kind of boring it to, to watch as a kid. Um, the aspect of time travel or time looping is interesting, I guess, enough to keep my interest as a kid. But I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> why is, and then when he, when he kills himself so many times, I remember being very scared. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, why is he doing this? Um, but, yeah, I, I watched it a little too young to the point that none of the jokes really landed for me. Um, but I did find this movie to be enjoyable later um when i watched it a couple more times it was it was one of those ones that was always on tv it didn't have to be yeah. grand hogs day for the movie to be on tv uh it yeah. was one of those like higher cable channels that were just played movies all day it would be on there on the 51 screen. for us anyway for here um and it, i don't know i i i feel like every good memory you always will look back upon with rose colored glasses um sort of like the a grass is greener situation where this is like nostalgic part of your brain will remember a day and you want to go back there but if you think about being in that day there was probably a lot of shit in that day that was annoying at the time <laughs> and it wasn't the greatest day ever, ever it was only a great day to look back upon it um i think that's kind of like the point of this movie right um but if I had to pick one, there was one time when I went to Mexico when I was like 26 and me and my friend Nicole pretended to be newlyweds and we snuck onto a resort, nice. like a very expensive resort. And we went through all the nice. processes of like pretending that we were newlyweds <laughs> and like a guy, a photographer was following us around and was showing us all the photographs and we gave him a fake room number to like charge some photos. <laughs> Oh, Did you get any God. merch? Did you get any free merch or anything? We got like, a bunch of you, like, drinks some and some food, and we were just charging this nice. room, and like we didn't know who the people were, but they probably That's had to dispute some charges later. Um, or they were so wealthy that they didn't even notice. Um, or it was yeah, an that... empty room, and the and the hotel foot the bill. Maybe. That's um, probably what happened. It, it was, was so funny. I remember like we were we were posing on this like big swing, and we were pretending to be like in a loving embrace or whatever. <laughs> it, was so, it was so funny it was one of the funniest days of my life um just sneaking onto because we snuck on through the beach like we just kept walking down the beach and we came up across this like private beach with all these beds everywhere like these like little cabana hut beds we just got inside one and then some guy came up and was like well so what why are you guys new here what's going on well, we're newlyweds <laughs> yes we're newlyweds yeah. <laughs> yeah anyway you made me think of a better answer because i thought it was so funny um yeah so well i i i'm gonna go now do it i was shown this movie so when i was a kid i went to things like uh like i had to be like babysat right yeah and i went to like uh day camp um a, a few years were you babysat <laughs> by the counselors <laughs> no, kind of. Yeah, I would say my supervision. Parents, 
trip me out. Yeah. I was a camp counselor for five years, and you are basically just a glorified babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> you get you fuck bow up, and arrow your, kid, canoe. your parents are going <laughs> to fuck you up. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the thing I noticed when I was a kid about this, lots of sleepovers. The sleepovers was the main yeah. one. Well, this was one of those movies. I've talked about these kinds of movies before where we didn't know what to rent. We were just, this was one of the ones. Because we mm-hmm. fucking loved it as a kid. I remember loving this movie. I remember when you start hitting those years where people are like, what are your favorite movies? You know, like when yeah. you start like socializing. It's like Breakfast mm-hmm. Club, Groundhog oh, Day, yeah. you know, the easy one. And this one always came up. And it's funny to me, watching it now in my mid-30s, realizing how inappropriate for kids this is, not because they're swearing or nudity or sex or any of that kind of stuff or violence, but because it teaches you that it's okay to manipulate, uh, gaslight, uh, uh, stalk. Yeah. It teaches you it's okay if you have the ability to, uh, you know, use the ability to repeat the same day over and over to cherry pick little bits from somebody's life and use it. If I went on so this is what I kept thinking about. If I went on social media, if I was trying to court somebody who was in the public eye, and I went Ooh. on social media or Google and I cherry picked little things like, you know, their favorite book, you know, where they grew up, you know, these kinds of things, and I regurgitated, yeah. regurgitated it to them like out of complete left field, like he does to Rita. He's known Rita for all of a day, and he thinks that. He, She's like, you know, he he's already looking at her like she's a piece of meat. He shows that he, he tries to do that with the other, the one hot girl in town. He tries to do that to her. Cherry pick and cherry pick and, and eventually just sleeps with her and says all kinds of lies. And then he does that, he does that to Rita and through that figures out that he, like he's in love with her. But really there's two women to choose from in this town. One of them is like kind of the ditzy blonde archetype and one of them is like has a little bit of She's got I, a little bit. I of think the implication is that he did this to a bunch of different women, and it worked. Um, yeah, and it, it doesn't work on Rita. I think is right. the point. Right, which we'll get into as we talk about this. I just wanted to say that this might have act- this might have actually taught the wrong things to certain people who saw this movie when they were young. This yeah. I don't think this movie is intended for children. It's intended for people who are who are cognizantly. Uh, of a- able to make these decisions and see how he's being a, p- a shitty person. Um, right. But I just have the, all my friends, this movie was just, we were plopped down, rainy days in school, fucking day camp, <clears throat> fucking being babysat. You know, I had seen this movie probably 30 times as a, like from when it came out. Yeah. So, I think that know, it's, it's kind of a byproduct of our parents. I assume we're all more or less around the same age, give or take a few years. Um, which would indicate that our parents are probably of similar age as well. Our parents were teenagers when Bill Murray was hitting like the height of his popularity amongst them. So in their mind, they're like, oh, Bill Murray is a kid friendly person because all these teen, these were uh, like raunchy movies that I watched as a teenager, I think are hilarious. So he's going to continue making these types of movies. They're good for my kid to watch. I'll show my kids this movie. Another good example of a Bill Murray movie that was constantly shown to me as a kid that I don't think is for kids, uh, but because of similar implications. Is what about Bob? And yeah, what about Bob? Uh, Bill too. Murray plays <laughs> like a, a like stop like a borderline that you can change the movie to. It's one of those movies where you can change the movie to the trailer and make it like a, a serial killery stalkery yeah. horror movie. You like if you the, edit it the right way. Yeah. So, but the thing about that movie that always stuck out is there's so much swearing in it because he's got, he always, he does a thing where he's like got Tourette's in it. And I remember as a kid, I I, I vividly remember sitting in like an auditorium. It was raining outside, a bunch of kids, and they were showing us what about Bob. And I looked at the camp counselors and they're all looking at each other like, do we turn this off? (laughs) Um, (laughs) This is not a kid's movie. But that's, but that's this is the nothing thing. like Ghostbusters. <laughs> that's the thing about that era, I guess. This is 1993 is right around the end of the, you know, PG, just a G rating, a PG rating, and, a, and an A rating, and then an R rating. There were only four four ratings. Uh, towards the end of the 90s, of course, they split it up into uh, smaller age groups, you know, so there's like PG and PG 13 were separate things. 14A and R were sort of, you know, their own X, thing. XXX. 
Triple X, of course, and and you know NC seventeen was basically what un unrated is now. Um, but that that's what I wanted to say as my connection to this movie because I I know the movie backwards and forwards. It's one of those movies where I know the dialogue. I know the, what scene is next. And you must have yeah. relived it several times. Hey, oh my gosh. and that's just it. Whoa. And for um, my favorite I think, day, your take, your, I think your take on the movie is um, very indicative of today's mindset in terms of like how we treat each other. And I think it's a completely fair take. Um, I think that that's not necessarily what the filmmakers were going for. Um, right. But no. also, but also, I completely agree. I was uncomfortable during the entirety of his like evil phase, where he was just doing what he wanted, like abusing this ability to get carnal desires, like literally, like gluttonous. It takes him three days face, yeah. to go on a crime spree. No, <laughs> well, we don't the know third, that. The know third that. day is when he when he goes gets into a high speed chase. Yes, the that third is, day but he's also shown. Drunk. The third day we're shown. I think and the fourth day we're shown, and then after the fourth day is when it, it's just it could be any time. Um, just oh, before also, we move into, quick, can, is my audio coming up on Zoom? Just very quick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just before we move into the actual movie, the, this I, this is cliche. It, it is my wedding day that I would live over and over, but not for the reason you would think. I do oh, love my wife very much. I was much, there for that. But the reason why I want to relive my wedding day is because a couple reasons. I didn't get adequate time with all of the guests. It was sort of a de facto oh. um, family reunion. So I'd like to live the day over to have different moments with all the guests. That sounds additionally, awesome. additionally, we had very nice cheesecakes made by Halifax very own <laughs> cheesecake wizard. <laughs> I remember which I got, there's a cheese wizard there? Oh, yeah. Which I got exactly one bite of. What? I didn't even get a whole slice well, that's because saying, I was right? walking around. Was by so fast, you wouldn't even get to eat your own cake. It, and that happened to me. And I yeah. that's and a that's cliche. It's filled with cliche. Um, but the thing is, is like if I had infinite time um, to relive that day, I would totally just fucking beeline it for the cake one day and eat all of the cake. Just jump into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I should change my answer. I would change it to your wedding day as well. <laughs> my wedding day. <laughs> you, you were both there, right, Kaylin? You were there, right? I was there, yeah. Yeah, we were all we were all there. We were all Steve, partying I'm sorry it up. If I missed you, I, I'm sure we met, but I don't really remember. <clears throat> um, it wasn't because it was wasn't so many that... new people. Like I, I was, I moved, yeah. I came to Halifax for a week, and I met all these people, and we were pretty much drunk the whole time. So I don't really <laughs> yeah. remember anybody. And me and Steve weren't. Madison. Me and Steve weren't even friends the way we're friends now yet. Yeah, we just, I was just as, a, as a plus one to that wedding. Yeah. Ooh. I don't even think we worked together yet at that point. No, yeah, that was. I think we became friends after, slightly after the wedding, and then you got the job with uh, the escape games, and then that's where we became like pretty, pretty good friends. Nice. Yeah. That sounds like. And fun. now we're best pals. Now we're best buds. We played video games and we do a podcast with our other pal, Kalen. Mm -hmm. I'm like gonna a, have a we... better answer by the end of this episode. But I don't like <clears> good. Your answer anymore. So, your, your answer was fine. It was a good night. In fact. I was like, what are party nights we've had together? That would be a good good example. Um, okay, remember. so <laughs> I'm going to do the fastest plot synopsis of this movie because it's very, a very thin plot. A lot of the movie takes place within the, um, like the, the, the home alone of it all, as I call it. it takes a, a place right away after the first day, but it's, it's, a, it's most of the movie. So yeah. Phil is a weatherman who's sent to Kentucky for the fourth year in a row. That right there, I noticed, was a little bit of a, you know, foreshadowing for what's to come. Because what? His fourth year, go, he was his fourth year in a row going to Pennsylvania to, uh, to yeah. cover the um, Pennsylvania Phil Groundhog Day ceremony. So he gets I like there. like delivery, the big blue thing. Oh, there's going to be this big blue thing here. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets there. Uh, he does the thing, he goes to the thing, he's, he's kind of like begrudgingly doing it, he's talking about how he's a celebrity. Uh, earlier in the movie he talks about how it, there's a blizzard coming, but it's going to a different town. The blizzard's actually now coming to this town. They try to leave the town, they get stuck there, much to his sugar. He wants to, uh, hey, is, is that A-Man or whatever he's called making a special appearance on the podcast today? That's a <sighs> shout out to Kalen's other show. Um, check it out if you haven't, because it's Pretty funny, actually. I've watched a bunch of 
Uh, that's not part of the plot line of this movie, however. So anyway, they get stuck in town, and um, Bill Murray or Phil stays at a uh, inn, and then he falls asleep. He wakes up to "You Got Me, Babe" by Sonny and Cher, and do, lives do, his do, day. Do. He goes to he goes and does the thing. Wait, wait. Oh Did yeah, you just no. Up? He goes and does the thing. Then he goes to bed and wakes up, and then it's he hears the song again, and then he relives the day. And then it turns out he's re- reliving the day forever. So then fast forward a bit. After he's like tried everything to be the worst person possible, steal money, uh, you know, um, just be a, a curmudgeon. Uh, he he starts trying to, you know, sleep with people. And then he tries to sleep with his, his producer who's there with him, who's, you know, pretty delightful, played by Annie McDowell. Um, and she's like, no way. So then he starts doing what I said at the top of the show where he starts cherry picking bits and using little bits from each day that he lives to relive this day, this date day with her uh, and learns everything about her. And then he can't steal the deal still. Uh, So then he gets real depressed and starts trying to kill himself for days and days in a row. I have a question for you guys. So I remember the, I remember the stealing Pennsylvania Phil and driving off a cliff. Also high speed chase and explosion. This is a movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, I remember that, Suey. I remember him doing the thing with the, uh, with the toaster. He gets in the, yeah. the top of the toaster. I have a distinct memory that was not in this version of him walking off the top of a building. Did yeah, I make the, that the up? clock tower. Did you not see him jump off the clock tower? It wasn't sure in my... Whatever it was. Yeah, <clears throat> it was in mine as well. Did you watch it on Crave? What? No, I I I own this movie. <laughs> Did you yeah, say it you wasn't, guys. You it wasn't. Good? I don't think it was in the Crave version because I was watching that part and I was like, Steve, did really you say it was or was it? It was. Yeah, I also have a distinct. Yeah, one. that is a very uh, cinematic moment. Um, it is visually striking, and I remember it quite clearly from childhood. And I was waiting for it because I haven't seen this movie in years, and I was like, oh yeah. I was waiting for it too. Uh, I'm gonna go back and check it out after Who this. I'm gonna crave? go. But I if wonder if Crave cut that out. Us, then. <laughs> Yay, Crave. First ever movie <laughs> podcast to be on a streaming platform, I suppose. Um, anyway. <laughs> he, I'd watch that. He ends up having... <laughs> we're not going to be the one. He, <laughs> he ends Don't up say having, that. Come on now. Come on. He ends up having an epiphany when he finally has like a really good, really good day with, with her. After he, he just starts like doing whatever in his dates with her. And then he's like, he has a really good night with her where he like, te- he's just like, fuck it, I'm going to tell her what's going on. And he has this big scene where he's going around the diner and he's like, this person is this, like, this person's from here and this person likes this. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, how, how did you know that? And he's like, because I'm a god, I'm immortal, and I'm reliving the same Not day over the and over. god, but. Yeah. So she's kind of like, oh, well, I, I have this like feeling, right? I, I, I can kind of feel it, you know, and I, that's where I'm like, oh, this is falling apart for me. Um, and then they have a, they go back to his place and it's not sleazy this time. And she, you know, they kind of fall asleep together and, and then, you know, he, he has the epiphany that maybe what's meant to be happening here is I have to do good in order to give her this look. Uh, well, it's kind of her that like, she says, maybe this isn't a curse. Maybe think of all the things you could do. And it, it, yeah. it kind of like pushes him in the direction of like, like he's, I think he says, you're such an upbeat lady. And it's like. <laughs> You know, like, she's right. I should maybe try try just doing some good stuff, to, and maybe it'll make me feel good. I don't think he thinks it's going to break the loop. I think he just realizes, like, I've been using this, thinking of this as a curse, and using it for, like, very base desires. Self- selfish. Selfish. It, the, the, the theme in this movie is basically selfishness versus selflessness, right? Or yeah. one of the themes. So, let me... I'm almost done. Um, basically, okay. he does a bunch of good stuff, um, and then he, there's the scene with the homeless man, which is very gut wrenching. And it's kind of like, he, he, you see him have a, like, this is all very futile. He can't save everybody. So then he hear he, one of his days, he hears somebody playing piano and he decides to learn the piano. And then it's just, it just kind of like go, goes to the end from there. You know, it's like, he, he goes around saving people like in that movie choke. And it's not a sex thing. Like it is in the movie choke. Have you guys seen that? From the writer, no, of, I've read the book. 
Fr- but I have um, not seen Fr- it. Oh, isn't that a Fight Club? Same guy as Fight Club? Yeah. Uh, it's it's a great movie. It's got uh, it's got what's his face, uh, Sam Rockwell. Um, anyway, nice. he goes around saving people, and then uh, everybody around town like knows when they're calling Doctor Phil. Which wait, weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, they call him Doctor Connors, which is also weird. Which is also great. Yeah, uh, Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> um, so we get a moment where he's playing the piano and she walks in and he switches the song and plays the song they learned for her and then uh, she, you know, then there's like a human auction, one of those bachelor auction situations, human and auction. Uh, a human auction, you know, Ugh. popular in the 1800s. No. And then, um, so basically, the you know the girls of the town are like are are betting on him to to take him on a date, and Annie McDowell's like. Rita, what is fucking nineties name? Rita, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like I three hundred and forty-one dollars and fifty cents or whatever, and they, you know, and they, 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 I think. they, they kiss each other. Whatever. Which is like, right. I wrote down, is that all the money she has? Because it looks like she's, <laughs> she's got a checkbook. It was a checkbook, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and like it's like her whole he, saving. She's a producer on this station, and and Bill Bill Murray's character. The best scene in the movie, in my opinion, is when he goes to get the piano lesson, and he's like, "Well, you know, I need to learn piano today. I've got a thousand dollars." And you hear, you see oh, the man. door close, and then the teacher push the girl out the door was, while you can hear him like so like. I so, know it's funny and like also. Comedy. Um, that like the montage of him doing good things is like this specific song that's playing a piano song that's playing and it plays right up until the moment where like they go inside and close the door and the music abruptly stops and nice. then it's her, and then it switches to the music. Yeah, it's a it's a good it's very good uh, editing. Um, also, my favorite line in the movie, which is like, "You say this is your first lesson," and he's like, "Well, my father was a piano mover, so." <laughs> <laughs> so funny so uh, the movie kind of just has a romantic comedy ending where it's a happy ending but it leaves me as somebody that lives in a modern day 2022 post kevin smith movies post quentin tarantino movies where a lot of the dialogue is them pulling apart famous movies i want to pull this fucker apart and uh we have know. we have about 40 minutes to pull this motherfucker apart. scalpel um, because i said scalpel <laughs> it's thank you. Actually, I do. I think that works. Somewhere. Yeah, it's right here. What if I do this? Here, it's a blade. Okay, so um, you guys, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about this. I gotta plug my phone in because I I didn't plan very well. I was looking at TikTok until eight thirty. Okay, sixteen percent. One of our recurring segments is movie title shout out. Shout out. Two minutes yes. and three seconds, I believe it was. Almost off the get go. Well, that is. I mean, yeah, for a movie that takes place on Groundhog Day, it would be so weird if they didn't say the name Groundhog Day like within the first five minutes, uh, and then a million times throughout. Uh, there were yeah a few few drops. So I know Jason, I know that you you did a pretty uh pretty hefty analysis of the movie already, um, and I I don't disagree with anything that you said. I think it is uncomfortable to watch, but I was uncomfortable up until the moment that I wasn't uncomfortable anymore, and I'm like, okay, at least they're addressing the things that I find yeah. so distasteful about this movie and the character, and. You know, if if any, but there are people that do these types of things in real life. Uh, like they'll they'll do sort of like stop mild stalking to try and figure out what people like. But it, it, in a movie, it's it's difficult to present somebody like that without it coming off as cre- creepy. Um, and I know that I think the intention was supposed to be like, oh, isn't that funny? Like he's 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 just like siphoning information from them, and then it's like they're getting their mind erased and then he can use that to his advantage later. Comical. Uh, it's played for comedy and uh, it, it wasn't really co- comedic to me in the same way. Uh, it, no. was more, it was more funny that I was like, wow, I can't believe that they did this. <laughs> this it, is it, fucking it, right. it, gross. It's a Harris, Harold Ramis movie. You know, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a light comedy. 
it's all it, at the time. I'm sure there were much. Dumber Isn't that fair to concept. say though? There's a bit of like there, like there's a bit of real, like realisticness to it or whatever. Where it's like, okay, if I had this power, what would I do? Kind of thing. Like, yeah, I'm not saying it's I good. I'm not, you know what I mean, condoning it. No, no, for right? sure. But if like, you could like live the base, you... like a base urge of a guy, or like you know, just whatever, right? Like there, there is that dark side of people, right? And like you said, there, it, he does come around and redeem himself after. So do you guys have an idea, like how long? You know, there's been numbers thrown around. How uh, long he's been trapped in the loop? Well, right. they, they've addressed. They've. I was about to to mention this. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. So the original version of the script was supposed to be 10,000 years. And yeah, in right. terms of the actuality of it, it's sort yeah. of like hyperbolically about 10 years. Um, I mean, what do you mean, by, what really, mean by hyperbolically 10 years? He says it hyperbolically in the movie as in like he's just saying it to, to basically give you a number, but like there's no real meaning to it. Oh, oh okay, gotcha. Yeah, well, hy okay. hyperbolically would be like exaggeration. I think it's more than 10 years, l less than 10,000 years. Yeah. So I feel <laughs> like a huge gap. I, if you like, think, I'd be a crazy person after 10,000 years, I think. He, well, the, he does go through that crazy period, right? Yeah, he kills Ooh, himself a bunch of times. That's true. Maybe, he kills a bunch of and then he gets past that hump, and it's even yeah. more than 10,000 years. If uh, I had this power, I would, I would probably have a similar trajectory, so where I just try to do some. That's the other thing shit. is like there is there is a very dark version of the script where they address things like murder and torture yeah. and like things that if you had the ability to live life over and over and over again without any consequence whatsoever, would a normal person go absolutely insane and start doing stuff just to see if they yeah. could? Uh, right, what exactly. Like. Would there and be a punishment to her? Obviously, that's a very different movie. <laughs> right. Uh, they also you know never... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, they never show him try... I think Palm Springs... Uh, sorry if this is a spoiler for the rest of the month, but I, in, I think in Palm Springs they actually address this, but he doesn't ever try to just, just get on the road and drive and be driving or be doing something. They, the only the closest we get is him like being awake at like four o'clock in the morning and then it's right. flicking over to six and then him waking Oh, like what happens at like if he stays awake the whole time, you mean? Like what happens? I'm sure he... that they, he probably tried that at some point in the movie. It's probably just boring. Like they probably you know did what, you know film that and removed it because it's not interesting. Okay. He probably wakes up at six the next morning with a terrible sleep because he didn't go to bed. The way I that's see it, another thing, right? The way I see it is he always wakes up with the exact same amount of rest okay. that he had. Okay. Like it's like the uh, time fair. is restarting right at that yeah. moment. Did he, does he, so he doesn't experience hangover. Yeah, so you can get like <laughs> Oh yeah, that is true. Wasted. That's true. You're right. So it would be yeah, it's just it's exact reset and starting fresh. Also, you know what I do I do want to see though. I want to see the original script of this movie made into a movie where it starts off where he's already mastered the day. Where, where as the viewer, the, he's doing these things. You're like, how the hell is he doing these things? And February 3rd, 1993 becomes his new loop, but he knows Ooh. everything. I was, reading, <laughs> I was reading a little bit about the movie, like the, um, the process in which it was made. And that is yeah. how the original script was written, is that he already knew he was already in the loop so you didn't really we're, we're starting like halfway it. kind of yeah yeah so he already has all these sort of like weird uh moments where he's able Knowledge. to avoid the puddle or like walk through traffic without any cars hitting him or whatever um <laughs> do you know where that feels it, there there feels like there's remnants of that in the movie we watch in certain moments where he can immediately like he has days where he can immediately have everybody kind of having him as the main character the, the where he's sitting eating popcorn and doing the Jeopardy thing just saying yeah. Jeopardy everybody treating him like the main character like he's in the room and everybody's like in awe and the other one that really stuck he did that day was, at least five days he did that at day. least yeah. the other one the other one that stuck out to me was like they just show him at the end of mastering uh, uh, ice sculpting yeah and, and that feels like that feels like something that he would have already had to have like a base level in, in that what you're saying. He, he, he we jump into the story halfway through, 
he's right, already in right. the loop. That I, that just stuck. That those two moments stick out to me for some reason. And and with that knowledge, I actually feel like those could have been holdovers from that. Jason, there is one corner. thing I've read. <laughs> what? There's one thing I said. Jason's theory corner. Yeah. I think I've gone through all my theories already without. I think I've gone through all my theories already without actually going into a corner, because uh, nobody puts Jason Ooh. in a corner. <laughs> I have. I have a. I have a dunce. I have a dunce cap. You, you would have a dunce. You cap. would have a. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, so I was reading this thing online. It was saying that the the shown slash mentioned added up to like forty two or something, which is like uh, the length of until it gets to spring or whatever. I think but that yeah, was, I was reading about that too. And there's thirty eight days that they show either fragments of or to completion or beginning, like in total. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But but then when I was watching it, um, there there I think I'm not I think it might have been the first date that goes well with uh, Rita, um, where they're they're chucking the the cards into the hat. It's like oh how'd you get so good or something like that. And he's like oh only six months, or something like that. Yeah, uh, she said it would take me a year to, to master this, and he said no six months with uh, intent four hours a, four hours a day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also, like, I, I hesitate to call that one a date. I feel like that is just, he reveals himself who he is, that he has this ability, and she immediately finds it in interesting. And rather than try to go on a date, which he's already done, like, a million times with her, he's just like, let's just hang out. And he just hangs out with her he's uh, for the day. experiment. And, yeah. and that's the, I think that's also meant to be the moment where he's no longer lusting after her. He realizes that he's in love with her, and he, he's now... The, de the depression that he has of being trapped has now evolved to this acceptance. And the movie definitely goes through the five stages of, of death or dying um, very clearly yeah. throughout the movie. And at that point, that's like his, his journey into acceptance. And he, uh, you know, he, he decides I should make the best out of this. And he doesn't come to that conclusion himself. He comes to it after realizing like, you know what? I can never be with this person. I have to be okay with that. I'm just going to try and make everybody else's life around me better. And he does. Did you notice the uh, kid with the broken leg in the hospital in the background? No. No. <laughs> what about him? He had two broken well, there's legs. A, no, no. There's a scene when he's at the hospital and in the background there's a kid with oh, a broken leg. Oh, is it the kid leg. that falls from the tree? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the cool. Next, I didn't notice that. Yeah, no, that's a good. That's a good little detail. The, um, there were, yeah, yeah, exactly. A few little I have a question. Background planted. Did I have a question for you guys. Do you guys think that Michael Shannon that... was hot when he was young? Yeah, and now he's scary. <laughs> was Michael Shannon in this? Yeah, he's did like he the, do, the young, the young guy who's getting married. Yeah. Oh yeah, fuck! I, I was looking at that couple. I was looking at that couple going. Up with his wife? That girl? Yeah, I do. I do. That girl looks familiar, but I didn't look at the guy. Anyway, my question is: Is do you think that? Andy McDowell and Bill Murray had good on-screen uh, chemistry because I did not. And welcome to Jason's Theory Corner. Um, it's okay. well known that Harold Ramis and Bill Murray um, didn't, not didn't like each other, but Bill Murray was cold. They stopped speaking for years after the film. Ba this basically movie. after this movie because Bill, Bill Murray was cold. I can still hear you. And, uh, and it's theorized, and it's theorized by uh, Harold Ramis that uh, the reason why <clears throat> Bill Murray was so cold and distant to Harold Ramis, causing their fallout, was because of the fact that because of Ghostbusters, it pigeonholed Bill Murray into having to play supernatural funniness, right. which happens with this movie, happens with Scrooge, Ghostbusters 1 and 2, all great uh, examples of it. And while we've only seen him in these four supernatural comedies, you can only imagine the amount of nonsense his agent came to him with during this era. True. You know what I mean? True. True. Yeah. You know, like maybe he was, maybe he was supposed to be Michael in the movie Michael, starring John Travolta. That angel? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Going so, up to the spirit in the sky. I don't think it had Iris in it by the Goo Goo Dolls. I don't think that they necessarily had bad on-screen chemistry, but I think that 
Bill Murray was was Peter Venkman in Ghostbuster 2 in the movie, even though he's pretty good in this. But Annie McDowell specifically seemed over it. And they had they had some moments that were pretty like movies are filmed out of order. And there were right. some moments that were pretty like pretty good. The that one little moment where he does the little like the little like tip on teeth and he's like, Oh, Galen, you dropped from the, the inst oh, Steve dropped from the instant. Oh no, what's happening? Okay. No, so if you can hear it what he waved his hand, but I don't know what he said. So my theory corner is that um, there was some trouble on set, and Annie McDowell uh, got frustrated with Bill Murray based on Bill okay. Murray not wanting to do it. Boom. So, what do you think, Kaylin? Do you think that these guys had good on-screen chemistry? The well, now that you mention it, like for the most part, like she's just kind of fed up with him the whole time like there's there's little moments like when so when when he first he kind of gets a a decent <clears throat> not decent he gets like he gets up to like when they do the snowman thing up to like the first time they do it like he he did the first things like a few times and like he was just being a sleazeball trying to figure out uh you know how to get in the pants or whatever right and um and then they get to that moment, and there is a bit of a genuine connection, uh, like a little, like you know, planting a seed, like an inkling of like the the wholesomeness that's there, as opposed to just like the base urges that are there. And and then he tries to chase that again, and he forces it, right? Like he's like, oh, he, like he does the thing where he falls like into the snow with her, but like in a very much more forced way. And trying to make certain things happen as opposed to when it was just happening naturally, right? When he's like laughing was... maniacally. That's the yeah. The, we were earlier when we were talking about how like he's kind of been driven nuts because he's been there for so long. Okay. I, this is this is the era when I think that starts happening. After he has the one genuinely good date where he almost steals the deal, but he's still a sleaze ball and he can't steal the deal yeah. because he can kind of see still see through it because he's like, I love you. Again. No, and he, he's like he, he's like stops being a sleazeball a little bit, but then he's about to exactly, and then he try yeah exactly yeah. Okay. Was that was was that all your was that all you had to say about it? I forgot what we were talking about. To be honest, fucking stoner. This what, this is what happens <laughs> when you smoke weed like five times throughout the episode. Um, I might sorry. What was the question? I got a phone call there. I was trying to. No That's worries. what it was. Um, I got distracted by Steve. K uh, Kaylin oh, had a good chemistry. No, sorry, on screen chemistry. Yeah. Oh yes. So... Um, I I don't know. I don't think that. Um, what's her name? Annie McDowell. Annie McDowell. Annie, yeah. I I have never considered her to be that great of an actor. No. Um, nope. nope. I mean, I don't, she's think she's, I don't think she's horrible. I think she's very beautiful, and I think that she she has, has some wholesome moments. She she all yeah she also has a wholesome quality to her that I think is beneficial to movies of this era and I think that she was typecast with that. Um, she I have, screams typecast. She screams nineties. She screams typecast. And I can't think of I can't think of Annie McDowell without thinking of the movie Michael. I can't think of her without thinking of the movie Muppets in Space. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I. I don't think she's a bad actor. Like, this is not me being like, ugh, get get out of here. I think she's fine. I just don't think that she is. Um, I don't think she's amazing. And I, I think that Bill Murray has a very natural presence on screen. Whereas yeah. when she's acting, she feels very actory. Like, it's it's... Like when right. she does yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. money thing at the end and 38 cents. I'm like, geez, what? Yeah. get back the to the shampoo time. commercials over here. Um, <laughs> but yeah so in terms of their, their chemistry I think the music the lighting and the cinematography of the moments where there is a connection between them are almost wholly responsible for any kind of emotion that I'm having within it um, I don't necessarily think it's either of them doing anything special to make me feel uh, like they are meant to be together sure. um, and yeah, so I mean, to answer your question, 
part of my movie making, man. If you can, part of my, you can craft it via other things. It's true. Part of my theory also comes from the fact that Bill Murray looks like a potato man. Uh, so, yeah, so to have yeah. him in a role where he's supposed to be like the leading man love interest just makes me think of Judd Apatow movies and and the, like television, the television trope where it's like the big fat ugly guy with Leah Remini as his wife or Peter Griffin with with, with uh, uh, Lois as his wife, which is like a T. It's been a TV trope for as long as TVs had sitcoms. Yes. And movies are no different. And it, you know, I don't. Bu- I buy Bill Murray <clears throat> as his character in Scrooge, which is a very similar character. And I buy, yeah. I buy Peter Venkman being able to like wisecrack his way into getting with uh, with Sigourney Weaver. He's also a doctor but, yeah. in that movie, which adds like another layer of like professionalism and like you're in... <laughs> naturally <laughs> there's people who are not doctors. You usually when you meet someone who's a doctor, you're like, oh, this person's probably very smart. <laughs> In doctor. this movie, he's like a local weatherman. Like, yeah, not a I, not a not a very impressive. If somebody said they were a local weather weatherman to me, I'd be like, "Oh, that's cool," but I wouldn't be like, "Hot." But there's more to <laughs> it than that. Local weathermen are usually women, and they're usually hot women. <laughs> or, How do you explain Cindy Day? Or square jaw man. Or, weathermen or, or are Rick traditionally Tamer. beautiful men. But I think it's also a product of the 90s and the 80s where men in those kinds of power roles were fucking potato men. We we're, have it well, good. I mean, no yeah, I, but I, like whether the weather men yeah. exist as well, but they are also generally usually pretty handsome. Like they're yeah, not uh, I mean. they're not schlubby, <laughs> schlubby dudes. Um, and it, it's, it is a very weird thing that we've all just collectively turned our back on in society is like yeah weather people have to be hot that's just yeah. like, nobody wants have you to seen... hear about the weather you gotta have a hot person tell you have you seen yannick garcia i don't know who that is i'm, I'm gonna she's... say no i Who's think she's weather? a california, california. the weatherman here we don't really have a weatherman we have the weather channel and the guy, one of the people, the guy who played... I don't know who Cody's the weather friend, information um, is for. It's on it's our on that. All of our I'm friends not, have an app that tell us what the weather is. We don't I'm looking to at tell you. three computers right now. I am looking <laughs> at three computers. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I ha, there's a little tab at the bottom of my screen that tells me what temperature it is right now. Inside. Kalen, it's four yeah, degrees you don't need a weather, man. I it's mostly cloudy. Kalen has a question. Let's, let's a question. go to Kalen's question corner. <laughs> Today. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> um, but I have a question. It's the Q. It starts with the Q. Which starts with the Q? We found out. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I watched the movie, then I watched it again with the commentary, and then I watched it this morning just for a little refresh or whatever, right? Who does the commentary? And what? Who does the commentary for it? Uh, Harold. Harold Ramis. And I could listen to that man talk all day. He's got a beautiful voice. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, he felt the need to tell the listener or viewer that he took that coat, uh, Bill Murray's coat. I forget what kind of coat it was. It was some sort of fancy whatever name. Oh, coat. like the big the big coat that he's wearing? Like the overcoat? Wears a, yeah. Yeah. But um, then I watched it for the third time. On the third time, when he first uh, wakes up, and she's like, oh, how are you feeling? Or, or it's like, she's like, did you sleep well? And he's like, I slept alone. <laughs> okay. Did you blow your own mind? <laughs> I thought I blew your mind. <laughs> no. Sorry. Mind unblown. I was um, distracted. Uh I don't know what I was distracted by, but I was distracted for like part of that. Probably kinda... the three screens that you have. No, yeah. I'm only. I was looking in your eyes, but my brain. You know how Homer's <laughs> you were brain is like a, a monkey. Yeah, you, you know Homer's brain is like a symbol monkey. <laughs> yeah. If I just so, I, I kind of dissociate. Some you might see my eye just kind of go like this and dissociate. I have a problem with dissociation. That's cool. I'm down with that. Is it not disassociation? It's whatever. It's either dissociate or disassociation. Uh, I want to look, look it up, but I'm not going to. Um, one thing that you could learn from this movie, Jason, is what a Clint Eastwood impression is. 
Oh, as he does a Clint Eastwood this movie. He says so one adult to one, well. two adults, I guess. Where Where do you guys get a chewing stick from, or whatever that thing is? Where, where from do you get outside, that chewing go grab a stick off of the ground. I no, also, I think that was, sure a, that was a I think it's a special, I think it's a specific thing. No, that was a cigarello. Like no, a I think there's. Cig- well, uh, sorry, I'm not disagreeing. It very well may be a cigarello or a cigar, but I think it might be a specific chewing stick. Like, not just some old stick off the ground, but like a specific thing that you almost like a really big toothpick. Kalen, you can chew a stick. You can, you can do that. And that is a thing. But yeah. or men, if you're, who, uh... men who were cowboys in, in the desert <laughs> loved tiny cigars. Yeah. And they would chew on what them. About those, what about those the pieces taste. of grass with the little the things on the end? That's rednecks. Yeah, you're thinking of <laughs> banjo on a deck in a bog. You're thinking about a hill. You're that thinking about a hillbilly thinking, kid exactly. with a frog, and one in cover overalls well, and one overall. One strap, yeah. One strap. Um, all right, let's 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 talk more about the movie. <laughs> hey, I'm the host here. Hey, Steve. Yeah. All let's right. talk Rated more in. about the movie. I'll talk about uh, whatever I want <laughs> on my episode, which I don't even know what my next episode is. Um, I so I don't really have, um, I had this grand plan to, to write a, uh, like a, like an outline for what our, at least my episode is going to be. Um, but I burned through the plot synopsis so fast that I kind of, we're kind of just in no man's land and we've already cut, we've cut a couple of Jason's theory corners. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kalen told us. Oh yeah. I got yeah, so for you. that's actually a good. I wanted to get to that because, and I did bring up the. I wanted to talk about Bill Murray and, and Harold Ramis' relationship, which I feel like I covered pretty well. Um, I Kaylin, heard a few things about it. Kalen, why don't you give us some facts? I'm going to plug my computer in. Steve, yeah. just be cool, man. I didn't mean to say it like that. I meant to say Jeez. it like. It's always cool. No, I meant to say it like. Be cool, man. Is that better? Uh, no, it sounded like you're better. telling me no, to, to stop interjecting. No, um, I, no, just, just tell be... him. Just tell him he is cool. Well, here's you're cool. Fact, Did you know that Gobbler's <laughs> not a real place? Well, and that's a yo, thing. Look, oral blowjob. Did you guys yeah. hear that too? Uh, yeah. Dick the, the gobbler's term knob. gobbler is literally just taking the two words and saying them in a different word order. Um, yeah, no, I was shocked to find that it is, it is a real place. It is not where they go in the movie. What? It is a real place close by in the middle of the woods. In Woodstock? In Woodstock, yeah. And, no, so uh, when I was watching the movie, when they're in the, uh, it's, I think it's, uh, I can't remember exactly what scene it is. There's this, oh, when he meets Ned. It's like, blah, blah, blah. blah. So they're talking on the sidewalk in the background. So they're supposed to be in Puxatawney or whatever it is, right? In yeah. the background, though, there's a store. It's Woodstock's Jewelry. I'm like, oh, man. You know, when uh, you, what, what's that called? Uh, con- not continuity. Kind of like continuity? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could have continuity. a store called Woodstock's Jewelry. It sounds like it's owned by a guy named Woodstock. Yeah, I mean, you could pass it off as that, but what it really is is the jewelry within Woodstock. Well, it was, yeah, it was filmed in well, Woodstock. Well, also, there's a Woodstock in every fucking city. Like, every... Yeah, like Springfield. I don't yeah. have a Woodstock. Yeah, you I do. have a Woodstock about like I have 45 minutes away from here. There's a Woodstock. Uh, oh, it might be New Brunswick. Is it jewelry? No, but there's like there's a place in eastern Canada called oh, Woodstock. Oh, area. No, no, no. But yeah, I, I agree with that. There's an area, but there's a store. So he's in Puxatawney, but it's Woodstock's jewelry. So it's a giveaway that he's in Woodstock. not Because like, they filmed in Woodstock is what I mean. I'd like to do a quick show note. I've been calling it Penzataki this whole time. Uh, it's Puxitani. That's uh, what I'd I said. Like to, I know, I know. I've, I, I'd like to apologize for calling it Penzataki. Uh, there's a character on Orange is the New Black whose name is Penzataki, I think. Puxitani. The irony is that that character is also called Puxitani, and you're just saying it wrong about that. <laughs> 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 That's better. <laughs> I'm, in, in I'm going corner? to my power corner. <laughs> your power is that also your theory corner? <laughs> yes. Do you, want, do, you want me to get, do you want me to get the hat? Get the hat. Oh, ha- hand me the dunce. Actually, you can keep the dunce cap there until you, uh, you know, get the 
I'll yeah. save it for my episode. That requires a dunce hat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I, I mean, as much as we've... There's a couple parts in this movie that I'm like, what's going on here? Um, the homeless man, he keeps referring to him as father, pop, and dad. And it's very weird. And I, really? And I didn't know no, that. They don't ad- when? When he first sees... Like, he gives him the money. And then yeah. later in that, I believe it's supposed to be the same day. He sees okay. him holding his chest, and he says, right. hello, "Hello, Father. Let's get you somewhere warm." And then okay. he tries to save him a couple of times. And then when he's giving him um, CPR, he says, "Come on, Dad. Come on, Pop. Breathe, Pop." And he keeps calling him Pop over and over again. So maybe he's an asshole because of some father issues. It could be, or it could be a thing where. Like, this is where I'm like, what is going on here? They don't address it again later. He realizes he can't save this man. Sometimes people just get old and die. And that's his realization that he, as good as he can be, he cannot be good for everybody. And he can't make sure that everything's going to be okay. And I'm like, did his dad die and he wasn't there or something? Like, was he that kind of asshole where his dad was sick and dying in the hospital? and He wasn't there to, like, say goodbye to his dad before he passed away. Um, I like it. Or is it just, like, a weird little detail they added? Um just to like make you kind of realize that he has trauma that exists outside of this curse that he's um, reliving over and over again. Could also be remnants of a uh, of storyline that yeah. was taken from the script in a darker, in a darker maybe it's how people, maybe it's how like pe- uh, guys call younger guys son or whatever. Yeah, like Phil's always wisecracking. He's always he's a he's the kind of character that gives people nicknames. Like right. he doesn't give right. anybody right. nicknames really, but he's that kind of character. Um, yeah, he he's a gross he's a gross man. He is completely self absorbed. He considers himself a celebrity, even though he's a local news broadcaster or sorry, a weather <laughs> broadcaster. Uh, podcaster, a weather yeah. podcaster. <laughs> he's a weather <laughs> podcaster, and uh, when he the first day that he goes to do the. Um, the reveal of the of the I almost called it a warthog, a groundhog. Uh, he says warthog to, day. It's a Halo Serena, movie. How'd you sleep <laughs> without me? Poorly, I bet, or something along Restless. those lines, right? Yeah, and it's like toss and turn. Like imagine saying that to somebody in any scenario. I don't think it would ever like. It just not goes down day, wrong, right? you know. You're well, like, when he's day, like, day, when he's like, when when she's like, I shouldn't be doing this, and he's like, Yeah, me either. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, Ugh. Like bro, yeah, like I mean, like, no again, means no. I, I think that they did need that stuff. As gross and as creepy and as weird as it all is, it's there to establish his character. And without that establishment, you don't you don't register the change as much. And yeah. it is meant to seem like a very slow transition, and it feels like one. It doesn't feel like he went from being a normal asshole to being crazy to being just like this horrible monster to being a good guy. It feels like there is a natural order to how it all happens and specific events are what trigger those changes. Right. Even when he is doing good for everybody and the homeless man dies, you can see that there is, there's like a gear going in his head and you can, it registers for me at least. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I still think this movie is like, I don't think it's terrible. I think that there's a lot of terrible stuff about it. And I think that like many things in pop culture, some people glorify the wrong things about it and idolize the wrong things about it. Um, but I think for three intelligent people who realize that like this movie is a little more than a comedy. Um, it is a dark comedy and yeah. it is meant to be a, a, a dark character comedy. study of this, of this man. And you're not supposed to, idolize him in any way he's supposed to be gross and he's supposed Shitty. to be a bad yeah. person it's like yeah. patrick bateman and like the joker and like there's these people like, that exist that yeah, are human beings good. just like me, you and me who idolize these like horrifying yeah characters. like the cast if it's always funny and it, who's and it just goes right. yeah it goes right over people's heads like they don't realize that they are glorifying the wrong parts of these characters because they're and, written well and they're written these shitty characters are written to be <laughs> relatable to appeal to a mass audience and unfortunately part of that audience goes that's my idol Tom Phillips is a joker that's me man 
society doesn't get me, man. Yeah, anytime gonna... somebody says this character is so much like me, it, you're probably talking to a complete idiot, just so you guys know. If you ever <laughs> hear somebody <laughs> utter the words, this character is me, uh, that person's probably <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that character is just like a regular person living on Earth. Oh uh, yeah, it's like no, you're nothing like this person, um, and probably for the best <laughs> that you're not like Patrick Bateman. Um, he either kills people like horrifically or constantly imagines himself killing people horrifically. He's also really well, that one's most out. safer. At he's least. also most definitely a closet homosexual and is like he's like lost his mind on every level, and like these people think that he's like an alpha or something and it's like no he's not he's so <laughs> like, confused about his own sexuality just even like his own gender life. and stuff and it's like you are missing the point of this movie and you're like sticking on to the facts that he like hates women and is jacked yeah. and like yeah. has lots of sex yeah. instead of uh you know getting what the movie is meant to be about anyway we're speaking not talking of about American Psycho. speaking of homosexuals i like that they did a gay joke and didn't do gay panic they did a gay joke and they guys like they did yeah. gay jokes, and it was good. And it wasn't really a joke. I'm sure that there are people who probably slapped their knees at that, and those are the people that, again, probably <laughs> compare themselves Nobody's to... Nobody's gay. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> those are the same people that probably uh, identify with the Joker and Patrick Bateman. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was just a fact, and it is kind of a shocking fact to learn about somebody if you don't know that. Not shocking as in, like, you're grasping at your pearls, but kind of like, oh, I didn't realize that. Um, and it didn't, yeah, it wasn't played for, for yucks. It was like, this guy paints toy soldiers and he's gay. And the guy's just like, I am, I am. <laughs> and, like, walks away, starts going, goes back to his job. Yeah. And it, it was nice. Uh, and then later that he does sort and of a weird hug. thing where he hugs yeah. Ned. Um, but that was also like, Ned is a horrible character, right? Like, Ned <laughs> Ned so no, really man, that was Ned is my fate. Like, I mean, yes. If Wait, are you going to tell life, me that you identify God damn, with Ned with... Ryerson? <laughs> that no, no, character no. Is... I'm a... <laughs> the at, Out of this whole movie, his character is my favorite. If it were real life, I'd hate him. But the fact that I get to watch this from outside of the, like, within its universe, right? Like, I get to watch it. He's my favorite character, like the my favorite out of this whole movie. Oh yeah, he's definitely funny, and uh, I like his character. But he's iconic for this movie too. You you can't have a conversation without without talking about the evolution of like the second day he punches <laughs> him in the face. The second day he's like, no, oh man, boom! Day he's no, just pushes him. He doesn't punch oh, him yeah. until later. It's but... the third, third day. day. I think it's the yeah. third day. Yeah. On day three, Phil chose violence. And he punched or the guy in the, the face. the third day that we see. The third day that we see. Well, yeah, yeah and it's you. like, that that's him going through, like, that first, uh, that, that, I guess, Realization. second step of, of death or whatever, where he's angry, yeah. So, um, just to keep things kind of moving here, I do want to do one last, one last discussion before we, we take her home. And I have, I have one two... thing to add, too, with that after, either some point as well, but yeah. What, what were you going to say? Well, when I was listening to the commentary, Harold Ramis made a comment about uh, how does Superman ever have time to, like, do anything with Lois Lane? Like, there's always something, right? There's always something that could be fixed or saved. Well, he or... dicks down so good that he only needs to give her, like, a second. Well, I think the thing is, he what? stopped That's... chasing her. I, let, me get my, let me get your coat for you. <laughs> Are you guys talking about my coat? No, he's no. kicking me out. <laughs> We're saying that Superman dicks down so good that Lois only needs a second. Um, <laughs> you're right. Uh, How does Superman get anything done? That's, let's talk about th that during a Superman podcast. Because right now, I want to talk about time travel. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Ooh, Ooh, just right. nebulous. Is this time travel? Well, let's, let's, he, these are the things I want to bring up in this last segment. Okay. When, do you guys have a theory? Have, did you, I, I've kind of come up with a theory, but I can't, I, I can't think of the moment when this starts happening to him. I think we talked about, I think, was last week a movie where, that's something, what was last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the, a lot uh, of the John Carpenter the, movies. Mouth of Madness, Mouth of Madness. When yeah. He, when he gets into the book or whatever. 
when does it start happening? In this, my theory is that they they make a big to do about he's been staying in this hotel that he's always he's always stays in when he comes here. Right. right. And they're like, no, you're gonna stay at this bed and breakfast. And then he stays in the bed and breakfast. And it starts happening. <laughs> It's uh, the bread and breakfast haunted with time travel ghosts. Here's oh my, my god! Does he get bonked in the head? When he gets bonked in the head when he's at the payphone, does shovel. he die? Is he dead and he's just reliving his last day? Uh, I This is my theory. And I like that they don't have some stupid moment where like a telephone yeah. pole gets struck by lightning or some bullshit that yeah. like, yeah, like know, a makes it happen. Yeah, like a total 80s bullshit thing. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yeah, need, yeah, yeah. You no, don't need perfect, an explanation. Perfect. That's not the point. Yeah. Um, but here's what I think. Every every day that's cut out of February, uh, every for three years, all those lost days uh, are actually February second that we're losing, and he's reliving all the lost days over and over and over again in the same in the form of the one day. Oh, but some so sort of like. Here? Yeah, like, like, do you, does this movie take place on a leap year? Did it come out in a leap year? I want to know if there's a leap year that has to do with it. But I, I just find that it, sounds interesting. It's not interesting. It's very stupid, and I. But I just I'll like the you. idea. Yeah, I, I, I'm poking these... holes in it a lot in my head right now. But I, I like <laughs> it. Just bring up, bring up your phone. Bring up your phone calendar. It's not a real theory. Bring up your phone calendar and go to ninety three. Uh, I need my phone for Instagram. Yeah, I'm I can not just gonna do that. I can just write in my computer. Was ninety three a leap year? So. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 only thing that the only my my only problem with that is that that one hundred percent is based oh, but nineteen ninety two of... was, which means this movie was filmed oh. on a leap year. Nice. True, but the, but that means the one hundred percent based off a Christian calendar, and we have no way of knowing what year it is right now, really. Ooh, that's a good point. I mean, we have a ballpark of a couple billion years. You, you, 65 million years ago, there were dinosaurs, and, you know, they had been around for a long time. Yeah, let me bring um, up my ancient, my dinosaur calendar. But, Rawr. like, the, I, I wouldn't say there was, like, a year one for Earth. You know, you can't really quantify a year one for a rock. What, yeah, what are you counting from? Are you counting from... Like, the, the first amoeba? ...things being there, or when things are actually condensed, and, like you said, it's amoeba, a cell, a bacteria? Yeah, no, so, uh, time... Um, other than like, like I mean, in terms of like a, a calendar, time is a construct completely created by human beings. And it's so random. Like, two, the fact that it's twenty twenty two and it's based off like a something who we picked can't 2000? even. Yeah, who we're picked... so we're so far away from it that we can't even wrap our head around. What do you mean, Kalen? What does that mean? Never mind. I just realized it was Jesus. Yeah, it's Jesus. <laughs> it's the death of Jesus Christ, but like. But no, like, oh, we don't... the birth of Jesus. We're, I'm pretty sure we're counting from his birth. He died in right, the year yeah. 33. Right, okay. There's well, allegedly. Who, who knows? <laughs> like, the churches, have, the <laughs> libraries have been burned several times over. See, now that is a huge loss. The, uh, I shouldn't have brought up my theory. <laughs> Alexandria is a whole other thing, Kalen. It's not... It's, I just it's... like the idea of the fact that we, every four years, have an extra day to play with. We're like, here's well, that's an extra of, day. That's because of, that's because of measurement. We're yeah. I know, make, like, I know nice... why it exists. I'm just saying the idea of it, like that we, every four years, just have this extra day that we need in order to make the rest of our calendar make sense. It's, is like like, the, it's similar to the extra hour. Yeah. But the extra hour is because of farmers. But you get it back um, when, you, when, you, when you go back. It's all antiquated. There's no extra point, hour, you just move the hour. My point is because it's of So that people can be in the sunlight longer. The food pyramid is also... <laughs> yeah, really why nice. don't they just wake up earlier? Why do we have to change <laughs> the time? Well, wake up later? It's, it's antiquated Wait, just... nonsense. Okay. My okay. brain. Clean slate. I got one more time travel question for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. You didn't give me your, your thing about the last one. I did. I think that the bed and breakfast is a haunted time travel oh, ghost. Oh, right. Yeah, play. right. Mind blown. Okay, yeah, mind blown. Yeah. Wait, what was yours? I, Steve thinks... No, no. Steve... <laughs> I don't think that. I was just Steve thinks it. words. Steve <laughs> thinks that it's New Year's, or it's a leap year. Yeah, it's Chinese that New it's Leap Year. Year's is... <laughs> Causes us to lose a day every for right. three years. Chinese New it's like a completely different year on the Chinese calendar. It's a completely yeah. different year. Yeah, it's a different uh, culture. 
And Ain't that some thing? The year of the tiger. Uh, let's all. Or what are we? Let's all take a, a brief moment of silence <laughs> for the Tiger King, who is still in prison. Who is still in prison? <laughs> oh yeah. Was... I'm gonna okay, get out of here one of these days. What about that other guy from Making a Murderer? They tried to do a season. Anyway, fuck. Hold on. See, this is what I say at the beginning of the show. That sometimes we talk about TV. Kalen, what? Where do yeah. you think this, this nightmare for Bill Murray starts? Do you have? Did you have you thought about this? Where does it start, or like what makes it start? Kind what of causes? What causes him to start having this? Uh, this Luke. That uh... cold shower. It's the cold shower. <laughs> Oh Too man, cold. why is there no what why is there no hot water on that specific day? Today? No. They, they never <laughs> That's addressed also that either. A very funny line in the movie. And they don't go back to it. He never finds out no. why there's no hot water. He's like, of course he's like, of course not. <laughs> he's like, he was better. Yeah. Like, is there he lit, the that happen, today. That's that happens today. and it just clicks to the next he just walks down the hallway towards us and it clicks to the next morning. Like that's that's the last maybe her saying that to him and him being confused. Is what causes the time loop to start happening. He's yeah, like, I'll you, take it. I can't, I can't figure this out. Why would you? Why wouldn't they have cold water in this day? That was the real yeah. secret. Is he just need to needed to figure out why there was no cold water and then yeah. it would have ended. <laughs> it's like he just did a bunch of side quests first. For okay. <laughs> Here's one other thing I want you to I want you to think about. If you, if you subscribe whoa, to the whoa, idea, whoa, 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 oh my whoa, god! Whoa, 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 whoa. What's okay. that? I didn't give you my answer. Okay, I know you didn't, but you weren't giving. You were just kept talking about other things when we were trying to get you. Just give me your answer. Let's go. Well, now I'm gonna say the shower because is that what you actually think? That's what I said. No. Why'd you stop? Whoa, 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 whoa! Let me just say the same thing that was just said. Hold on. <laughs> What's your well? Answer? No, but I felt I felt like I was on the the the, the ped, not the pedestal the chopping block. No, you're on thin ice. You're on you're on the chopping block now. <laughs> Let's go. I still have my uh, scalpel. Okay, so when 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 does it well obviously no it's like it starts at six. So six is the next day so they get there, he they do the thing, um they can't leave, and so he fucking crashes there, wakes up that no it's wait. Ah, damn it. What's he that? has okay. a cold shower, and then he goes into his room and goes to bed, and then he wakes up, and it's the next day, and it's the same they, time. They do address the time thing, because there is that moment where she's like, it turns to midnight, and she goes, oh, you're still here. And he's like, what? I never said it was midnight. She's yeah. like, you knew you knew I thought it was midnight, because fucking it's always midnight, and like that's when the day legally That's the cliche. It's the cliche. It's a cliche. It's a trope. It's, yeah, no, this is legal. what I was saying earlier, is like, they probably <laughs> filmed the scene where he waited to see when it would flip over and it just probably ruined the flow of the movie and they're like we don't need this the question doesn't matter anyway so let's get well Kurt will be talking about it on a podcast in 25 years (laughs) it'll be a leap year I bet too (laughs) not a leap year but it's a winter Olympics year okay so Kalen that's your final answer I do no well it's not a time loop thing it's a uh, it's gonna it's a it's a nihilistic existential horrific quandary so if you believe dope. if you believe in like the infinite to, to, like infinite timelines infinite dimensions sort of idea every one of these every one of these days splinters off into its own universe its own dimension yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah the yeah, implications yeah. of that were getting to me during the, because of all the fucking great shit he does what happened in the universe after he fucking walks off a building or, or horrifies a, a bed and breakfast of old folks by... Well, he's dead. A... He'll be dead in that... In that room, they'll be right? sad maybe for a day or two and then they'll go back. They'll go back to... See, now that's the other thing about this movie, right? Like, do you think, so yeah, do you think of course day, correct? Literally. Do you think it just goes... But we are kind of trapped in the same day. You know what I mean? Like metaphorically. Right, like we we go through the same sort of pattern or whatever, right? When well, he works so from home, more... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much more we could be contributing to life or whatever, right? Like it, we're fortunate of not literally being trapped in the same day, but we're metaphorically just repeating the same thing over and over, right? 
but also at the same time, we're not really repeating anything. It's one line. <clears throat> one line. In, in regards to your, your timeline Sleep, thing, yeah. Sleeping is more of a, like, metaphor for, for human beings. It's more of like a, we use it as a, a marker to change to the new day. But really, the reality of what's happening is you're just, you're still existing. You're just, your brain is just shut down. It's sleep mode. It's like shut down. Yeah, you've turned off. But I'm at the same off. time, we're all experiencing different experiences. So who, who's to say that, like, this is another thing I was thinking about while, while watching this movie. Well, a lot of the things he experiences that he doesn't interact with are, are happening mm-hmm. script, like almost script, like an empty scene video. But as he goes on and he's able to just, like, easily influence more and more people as he learns about them, here's he changing mm-hmm. their lives. Like he's pulling them into his like <clears throat> grab like gravitational flow or sphere, and I'm starting to really think about the like implications of this and how he's he's building he's building as a as a being by knowing things about everybody. Because if mm. somebody came up to me Ooh. on the street, if somebody came up to me on the street and just started spouting things they do about me, I would instantly yeah. believe anything that they like <laughs> if it was. Stuff that wasn't easily accessed online, yeah, it would yeah. immediately be like this person is something special. Yeah, you know that's why people cling to like mediums uh, or mediums and and psychics and stuff. Yeah, but like if somebody could actually do that, that would be a pretty devastating power to have. And I think that there's a lot of philosophical discussion to be had around the implications of having the power of a looping day. Mm. You can't break the, the cycle. Well, he though. refers to himself as a god, not as a god. god, but a god. A god. So anyway, yeah. um, I wanted to get into that a little bit. It's another movie that I like watch, like sat down to watch. I know I should be doing that for all of them, but I'm busy. <laughs> I'm a busy guy. We're all Sometimes... busy. What? Busy playing Final Fantasy fourteen, you creep. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm creepy. Okay? Um, I gotta level up my black mage, and then I gotta level up my fucking reaper. Listen, I am, I'm not opposed to playing video games and watching things at the same time, but if you're trying to analyze it as the way we are doing in, in these discussions, it is important to observe. I don't play video games. And I, I've never played a video game and watched um, watch a movie. So, oh, I do it all the dang time. Put the office no, I'm, I'm on saying, and I play Death's Door. It's great. I wanted to call okay, that. I got because... a question. I got a question. Okay. Uh, or no, I don't got a question. I got a tidbit. There was a, there was a version where Phil finally wakes up from it, like he's on to his next day, and Rita, he finds out, also was having a time loop. Interesting. That's how that would be play. crazy. Because she almost like... A she... you know, sequel. It'd be like a sequel without it actually being a sequel because it would be its own movie. Well, I saw a good meme today that was like, I have a good idea for a sequel for Groundhog Day. Just release the same movie in theaters. <laughs> Call it the sequel. Um, it would be, I, I feel like <clears throat> you could remake this movie, but it probably, I mean, I guess they'd, like The Edge of Tomorrow, where, I mean, spoilers, that's what we're doing next week, is literally the exact same concept, except it has the dumb explanation. Explosions. I've oh, never, okay. I won't tell you then. Um, it's, I don't know. It, it is the same thing. Different. It's a time loop, except there's big robot suits and monster alien things. It's pretty good. I, I liked it, but I'm excited. I have it's a good seen, movie. Let him come. I back. have seen Palm Springs, and that will get into... I, I, that movie's the reason why I've asked so many questions about this movie. Yeah, so, and I, I think okay. that you know what you were getting at earlier about philosophy and um, the implication of having this ability... It's probably something that they were interested to explore, but realized, you know, this is going to be a comedy mostly, a, a, a rom com basically. Um, we cannot go too far into the direction of like, Dude, what would a real person do? Because the reality of that is one person being stuck in a in one place, one time, reliving the same experiences over and over and over again, while everybody else is Everything. oblivious to it, is. It, it, it has the potential to be something extremely dark. Um, 
I you can do everything. Know. It's limitless. It, it's like it would be like playing a video game where you saved just before you know when like I play Skyrim sometimes yeah. I save and then I kill everyone in the town just to see if I can <laughs> and it's like <laughs> would I do that in real life I don't know I don't know if I would be physically capable of doing it or mentally capable of doing it the implication that I could do it and have no comp yeah. no no um, Con no consequences to that and I would yeah. restart the next day and nobody would know I ever did it. But that's different. Kinda, that's different because when you... It's bending to me. That's different, though, because in this, he retains all of his knowledge, but he doesn't retain, like, battle scars. He doesn't, like, how far does that go? <laughs> I'm not talking about, like, if I'm strong enough to do it. I'm no, no, no. Physically, I mean, like, would no, I... No, no, but in, in Skyrim, point, okay, what? your character doesn't retain any of that, all that your character retains, assuming your character has your mind, you just know what happens if you try to kill everybody, which is kind of the same thing of what Phil experiences, but Phil can, like, level up. Phil could... If well, I mean, come I, out of the so I, in Skyrim, if I do that, I now know there's a guard Before up, you up fight top a boss there. or something, right? Okay. Like, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll retain the, the layout of where everybody is in the town and what they're doing when I start this killing spree. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's exactly the same situation. He, it's like he saved at 6 a.m. and he'll always go back to that save point no matter what happens to him. Um, yeah. Again, I, 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 I like to think that I would not get to that point, but after 10,000 years of reliving the same thing right. over and over again, there is a chance that I might be like, is there like you get bored. an axe store in this town? And like I would, I would go full uh, Sam Neill. You want to see events. something new. My biggest problem with it was that television, t TV was already so limited in 1993 that you would know the, you would know the everything on every channel, and you would know what everybody said, kind of like what he was doing with Jeffrey. Right. And right. It, it was so yeah. there was only fucking ten channels in 1993, and there. Uh, if they were in, I mean, maybe. Hockey, hockey, hockey. Um, what's the place called? Oh, it's called Puxatoni. Puxatoni. Here in Puxatoni, you have it. You, they probably had three channels. So, anyway, so <laughs> well, we, yeah, we, we went into time travel discussion for fifteen minutes longer than I, but I knew it was going to happen. But I wanted to get to it before we jumped well, out I here. I also want to like... make it clear that if I was stuck in a time loop. I really do believe that I am too emotionally and physically um, empathic towards other people to think that I could, <laughs> I would be capable of doing that because I, I can't even watch somebody fall off a, a ladder without being like, Oh God, <laughs> let alone go on a killing spree. <laughs> I don't know about killing spree, but who knows? 10,000 years is a long time. It is. Um, it gives you such what... a, a crick in the neck. That's, <laughs> that's from the movie Aladdin. Let's uh, let's hit up some final thoughts and go do other things now. Um, I wanted to keep it nice and tight, but obviously I let I let it I let it go. Yeah. No, I think to talk we're about. almost at an hour. I think we we're are, well, we're over, we're over we're we're like in an hour an hour and twenty five minutes or so. We're we're on par for our regular episode. Um, I I want to end it. I want to end the discussion where we we're ending it because we're gonna have lots of time to talk about time travel shit and time loop stuff. So if we if we blow our loads on this, then there's not going to be anything to talk about in later episodes. So yeah, don't blow uh, your load. Don't blow your load, Steve. Why don't you give us your final thoughts and your come up with some sort of rating? Maybe you just recommend it this week. No. Um, I'll give this uh, seventy-one time loops out of a potential one hundred time loops. Um, that's my rating. I do. I did still enjoy this movie. Um, I didn't get nearly as frustrated it, as frustrated with it as it seems to have you, Jason. Um, but part of that is nostalgia. Part of that is a deep enjoyment of Bill Murray's performances and everything that he's in. Um, and there's also a nostalgic value to it for me in terms of it just has that real sweaty 90s aesthetic every, the cars the clothes the music um how every scene sort of has like a jingle going on in the background it's that's very 90s in my mind the song that he plays at the end on the keyboard with the guitar like the electric guitar it sounds almost like an intro riff to like a 90s sitcom <laughs> it's very what 90s. that weatherman song 
I don't know if it was a weatherman. But when he plays, when he learns piano and plays at the the auction. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I do enjoy the um, the development of his character. I like that it goes through very clear stages of him dealing with this, similar to the stages of death, as we mentioned earlier. Um, I also like that they address the things that I was so uncomfortable with when I went in. And I remembered that they were in the movie, but I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was going to be. Um, as you said, Jason, with like the advent of uh, social media, if somebody was to do that, unless they were a very charming person and was upfront about it and said like, oh, I read on your profile that you enjoy this. I also enjoy it. <laughs> I think that would be an appropriate way to go about it. Um, some people might still find that creepy, but if you were just like seeding in details of stuff that they like without their knowledge that you had been essentially digitally stalking them, it would be very bad. And he is at that point in the movie, a disgusting monster man who's just servicing his base desires, his most carnal instincts as a gross guy. Um, and I like that they address that and they make him realize that that's not going to work on everybody. It might work on a few dummies here and there, but when you're, when you're trying it on everybody, it's not going to work on everybody. And even though you have all this prior knowledge and experience, that one person will just have a feeling that you, something's wrong with you. And it took him going through all of that, experiencing it over and over again, to then realize that this is an impossible task. And he didn't, it's not even that he changed his tactics, it's that he abandoned all tactility and just decided to be himself and, and, and accepting of it all. And I really did enjoy the, the sort of ending montage of this movie where he is a better person and he's no longer doing it for himself. He's just doing it because he wants to see the area that he can influence to be bettered. And um, even the resolution of the movie, which is, I believe, meant to be that she is seeing him and no longer is he just in love with her, but she has found a way to fall in love with him, with him in, as well. And they're meant to be together at that point in a very cinematic and like literary way. Like, it, it's, you know, the things like that don't happen in real life, obviously. But within the, the context of the story, these two people are now meant to be together. And that's what breaks the, the curse or the loop. Um, at first, I was like, oh, no, was the whole thing he just had to bang Rita <laughs> in order to end the year? <laughs> and then you realize within a minute that he's still fully dressed in the same clothes that he was wearing the night before. She says, you know, like, oh, you just fell asleep immediately. I, they really address the fact. It's like, no, 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 they didn't do it. They didn't do it. They just slept in the same bed. They didn't do anything in the bed. They just were friends sleeping in the bed together. Um, but yeah, uh, I love blood sausage. It's delicious. They mentioned blood what sausage. What is it called? I couldn't tell what it was called. What is it? Blood sausage. Have you ever What's had blood sausage? And what is that? It's like is a sausage meat? that's made with blood. Uh, it's like coagulated it's blood. Very rock. British. Yeah. Very British. It's good. Is it good? Yeah. yeah congealed blood in a sausage casing. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard, hard blood? Yeah, hard blood. Yeah, it's not like a balloon. Okay. Season. It does just taste like fucking. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give this uh, seventy-one blood sausages out of a total of one hundred blood sausages. Seventy-one time looping blood. Sausages. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good movie, but I think there's lots of problems with it, and I think that the concept itself is problematic, and it does deal with a lot of things that you would think it would deal with, but at the same time, it is still to a degree family friendly. Uh, probably should be PG-13, not PG, <laughs> but, you know, we're living in a yeah. different era, guys. Yeah. All right. Caleb. Why, I think I just had a... Pardon? Why don't you give us your final thought? If I have one rant. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think I had a bit of an epiphany. Um, so, yes, to everything that we've said tonight, um, as I'm sitting here and listening and talking and listening, uh, he, so, uh, to, there's this book called, uh, The Game, I think it's called, and it's like about this guy, he's like a writer or used to be a writer for Rolling Stones, and then he like met this 
pickup artist guy uh, who like yes. taught classes how to pick up. And there's, well, so you, you said gross and there is definitely a level of grossness to it for sure. The, as we're talking though, so the way like this movie paint, like paints it like a nice version like it makes like a fairy tale version of a guy being a dirtbag trying to get it, and then uh, essentially not trying to pursue it anymore, and then gets it. <laughs> and then so I was like, we're here talking about this, and I'm you know listening and talking, listening and talking. I'm like, because like that's kind of what happens, right? Like he's been he he he's trying to go after it, but then when he stops trying to go after it, he starts doing. Well, so in in the context of the movie, good. But if you kind of look at it through another lens, uh, so like he he she sees these people come up to him and congratulate him and thank him and like he he's getting this status right from from outside people. She's seeing a status. He's you know he's playing these instruments so well. Like there he, he's not paying her attention anymore. So then she wants to give him attention. I don't know if that's accurate. He's not, he didn't specifically do those things in order to impress her. He did them to have I don't mean people. in this movie. I mean, if looking at it through a different lens, like, so the way, no, like, yeah, the lens was, of a creep. <laughs> that's what I mean. There is, there is some truth to that, right? But I, yeah, I suppose. But I think in the reality of that day, he wasn't trying to, like, to her, he was an asshole yesterday and now he's a good person today um right it's not like she's thinking oh he's not paying attention to me anymore they just met like the day before and it's not like yeah. they've known each other right. for a long time so i remember what caused the tangent someone said something about like how you know we should be con like you know mature enough to realize when he's being a shitty person like the movie's not trying to promote that it's a bad thing right and it's like this is how you should act and then i was like "Ooh, what if a shitty person just acts that way but it still has the shitty intent or whatever right yes those people are called narcissists and psychopaths <laughs> um i i agree with you and i think that the movie again like it's not particularly saying this is how you should act it's saying this is how you should want to act you should want to right. be like this you shouldn't do it for any reason other than the fact that you want to make sure that selfless other exactly selfishness are... versus selflessness you should do things for others, not yourself. Yeah. Can you guys still also, hear me on the also, Yes. I got what I got I got a better Dave Repeater. Oh God. <laughs> okay, you ready? Maybe. And this okay. So I um my mom had uh, like a limo service at the time. So she had like some limos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was she like was away on business. Uh, this was like a few years ago. It was like like when I was in high school, maybe or shortly after high school. Oh yeah, really shortly after high school. Yeah, I almost forgot to ask you about your what day would you be again? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, she had a limo service. She was away on business. I checked the books for the limo, and uh, they like they weren't booked for anything. So one day I woke up really early. I rolled uh, some blunts. I went and picked up my friend. We went to the beach. It was in the summer. We went to the beach. <laughs> we went to the beach. We had a great day. We went to Casino Buffet. And, like, I was, like, I asked the guys, like, can we get, like, a pitcher of orange juice, a pitcher of chocolate milk, a, pi a picture of something else, maybe pop or something. It was, like, a well, I'm of only supposed to do milk. a cup. It, chocolate milk is delicious. I and know, but I've milk. never heard of somebody getting a pitcher of it. I've well, seen well, it. Hey, Diners have it. Wild. So he's like, I'm only supposed to bring a glass. And I'm like, well, how about instead of bringing a glass every couple of minutes, you just give us the picture and you can chill and we'll be here and la, la, la. So that was a pretty dope day. Wow. I didn't expect, <laughs> expect that answer. It's nowhere near what I thought it was going to be. The yeah. day when I drank a lot of orange juice and chocolate milk, it was great. It was a great day. We uh, let's all say that our loopable day was my wedding. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to repeat rating? Jason's wedding. Kaylin, what's your oh, rating? My rating, my rating is uh, 
uh, a crazy um, uh, groundhog driving a vehicle. He was probably drunk. I think that groundhog was drunk when he was driving that truck um, out of one red truck. Perfect. Nice. I like convoluted, weird ratings that don't make sense. So do I. It reminds, me of, it reminds me of on cinema at the cinema starring uh, uh, or, Decker, or Decker. Monster Factory when Justin yeah. McElroy just gives like a weird, nonsensical rating. He gives it a on, on, on cinema at the cinema they give it like sort of porn like, like things of porn. Anyway. Yeah. I, I think digress. Conan does it as well when he <laughs> races video games. Yeah, he, yeah, some nonsensical stuff. Um, I unfortunately only gave this a two point eight, and I really just, I, I really just want to quickly. I think I've covered my problems with this movie, um, yep. but the thing is, is unfortunately, I might, maybe, shouldn't have watched this movie again. It's, it, it works a lot better as a memory. Um, okay. Looping in my memories, if you will, nice. than it does trying to watch as a fucking fully formed brain adult man um, or woman. Who knows? Um, and <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> and I was just kidding when I said I had more rant to do. I don't. I just feel like it. It, it kind of pushes some weird wrong ideas for a certain era, and those weird wrong ideas don't really translate to now. But the, where they do translate yeah. are especially heinous because you can, it's called catfishing, basically. Catfishing and gaslighting and manipulation are basically three things that he utilizes to date women. And that's disgusting to me. And uh, <laughs> you really like, I listen, I, I agree with you, but they address it in the movie. I think that's a thing that, that really needs, that is important because without the addressing it, 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 he's just a garbage monster. Fair enough. You're right. Okay. So it's sort of addressed. It's marginally <laughs> but like addressed. you said earlier, and like Caitlin said in his analysis or his review, people will take the wrong thing. And I think yeah. that's what your point is, right? Yeah. They'll, they'll, that is my point. They'll see it as a tactic rather than a uh, a lesson learned. <laughs> and I'm, not I'm, a, I'm afraid that this movie forms brain, young brain, to be like get what you want to do it however you can um and on top of that the ending is dumb the ending is <laughs> the ending felt packed on to a pretty good movie like a pretty good plot like a pretty good like like character study of phil whether or not he's shitty or not um oh oh, oh. can i challenge him to a one bite anything off who uh phil you or you guys you can challenge me no. to whatever you'd like me to yeah, challenge. If you challenge me, I will refuse, and I'll just watch you shove a whole piece of cake in your mouth, because I don't want to do that. Oh, yeah, the one by cake. It's a choking I, hazard. Things, one by that you make it. Um, but I hated the I hate the ending of this movie because it's so anticlimactic, because it's just kind of like that last day. He just sees him play piano, and she, like, knows slash remembers or something. Like, I don't even, I don't even think it's implied that she, like, remembers it's just she's just like like a feeling played a song that yeah. like whatever and then the last like five minutes of the movie are then just being lovey-dovey like it doesn't it doesn't really add anything it's just the ending of a romantic comedy and i especially it's only because it. the fence was frozen yeah so like i said 2.8 out of 5 and uh we have a we have a good month coming up for uh for you guys i'm gonna i'm gonna edit this uh, at some point, probably over the weekend, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add it to YouTube. I'm gonna All throw it up stuff. on social media, and we'll have ourselves we'll have ourselves a place to go. Hey, hey, Jason, may I say something? Go ahead. Your uh, beard looks glorious. It's it grew. I got it done professionally when I got my hair and beard cut, and it's growing in this like great way. And my gray is coming in. You could look at me and Kayla and be like, "Who's older?" And it's me. Um, what do you mean? Yo, so I watched that video, right? I look super gray in that shit. Like, I look a lot of gray. And even right look, now, I look a lot of gray. You look super, that's what I'm saying. You look super gray right now, but I'm older than you by, like, a little bit. Well, I guess I'm just more, uh, what's it called when you're gray? Um, pissed off? Stressed out. Stress. Stress. I can't grow a beard. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm the baby. 
Steve is uh, have a t-shirt. So with that, uh, have to... it's not falling out. It just doesn't grow. <laughs> I have to ask a, a very important question to the viewer, to my friends, my colleagues, my confidant. Um, uh, hey, did you see this one? Uh, who? Did you see this one? Did you uh, see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Hey, did you see this one? Mm, uh, hey, did you see this one? Oh. Hey, wait, I got a little complaint. See this one? I yeah. did. I saw it. Uh, I saw it today and it. yesterday. For uh, for Steve, for Kalen, I'm Jason. For Jason, for Kalen, I am Steven. For Steven, for Jason, I'm Kellen. Good night, everybody. It was a wild ride, um, but we got this time this month is the tournament. Loopuary. Loopuary.